How is everyone doing this evening? I'd like to welcome everyone here tonight to CIPDC Presents, a uh, bi monthly series that we uh, try to put on in this exact same location. So the last Tuesday of every other month now, um, we try to focus on topics that we believe are important to uh, local economic development issues. Um, hence, tonight uh, we have decided to put on an event about uh, prospect and considerations for a new local business incubator. Um, with regard to it, uh, the way that we're going to go about it tonight is to have a brief introduction to the topic so we all kind of have an idea of what we're talking about. Then I'm going to introduce our panel and we'll move into a discussion followed by a question and answer and commentary from anyone who feels like it. Okay. Um, without further ado, to bring the talking with folks, I should probably introduce myself too, by the way. Um, my name is Mark King. I'm a local small business and intellectual property attorney here in Wilmington, also a uh, member of the board of directors for K3 Economic Development Council. So, again, I personally welcome you as well as CFEDC welcoming you tonight. So, with regard to, um, okay, there we go. Incubators, what are we talking about? I'm going to step back so that the panel can see as well as me. Um, specifically, what is an incubator? Um, the broad definition of an incubator, as put out by the National Business Incubator Association, is as intended here, a business support process that accelerates the successful development of startup and fledgling companies by providing entrepreneurs with an array of targeted resources and services. Um, this is very, uh, I would say, broad macro description of what an incubator is. Uh, tonight we'll hear a little bit from our panelists as to what their uh, particular perceptions of an incubator locally might look like. Um, aspects of an incubator that are not included in this particular definition that are frequent in an incubator is uh, the overall support network and infrastructure that comes with the incubator program, uh, specifically uh, providing access for startups to services needed, uh, be it uh, SBA liaisons, uh, CPAs, attorneys, um, also um, frequently dealing with placing startups um, in actual space um, where they can run their business from. Um, why incubate if you're a startup? Okay. Well, uh, per the National Business <coughs> Incubator Association, in one year's time, 27,000 startups employed 100,000 employees and generated 17 billion in income. Okay. Um, these were startups that went through North American incubators for the year 2005. That gives you a look at the potential. I know the stat's a little dated. It happens to be the most recent thing I have on their site. The Further, incubators, uh, stats from NDIA as well, incubators uh, have reported that 87% of the firms that are on their program are still in business. Okay? That stat is impressive in and of itself. I consider it very impressive when you consider that the Small Business Association cites that 50% of all small businesses fail within their first five years. In terms of an incubator, when I said that we're going to hear about people's personal perceptions of what a local one might look like, what are the different flavors of incubator? Okay, Here, you see we have brick and mortar, or a virtual incubator. To give you uh, some perspective on some local examples, uh, AB Tech is an incubator in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, it's with uh, Buncombe Community College, uh, in association with Buncombe Community College. That is a brick and mortar. Uh, North Carolina A&T University, meanwhile, offers a virtual incubator in the Greater Wilmington, not Wilmington, Greensboro, Winston-Salem area. Uh, with regard to general or industry specific, there is 
believe it's Eastern Food Ventures Incubator in Duplin County. That is obviously a food venture incubator industry specific. Meanwhile, you have Upper Coastal Plains Incubator in Wilson, North Carolina. That is a general bring whichever startup you'd like into type incubator. For profit or non profit, we have a for profit model for an incubator in Wake County, North Carolina, under the name Incumed. Okay. They uh, deal in medical device startups and basically. They are a funded uh, venture capital that puts money into uh, the startups that come in. We have a nonprofit example in the Nussbaum Center for Entrepreneurship in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, as you would expect, nonprofit being not being the opposite of for profit, maybe. It would be the best way to say that. So, um, the reason we're having the discussion tonight. Um, We'd like to hear a little bit first from, from some folks that we believe uh, well qualified to speak to uh, the issue of a local incubator, the prospect of a local incubator. And we believe it might be something uh, that's important and needs to have traction in this area. Um, my favorite stat uh, that I found from the National uh, Business Incubator Association was the return on investment um, with public subsidies in incubators. Uh, the return on investment for every $1 spent in public subsidy for an incubator, it's estimated that $30 go back out as local income taxes okay, from that. So that's a 3,000% return on investment. Um, I think any of us would take that uh, right now. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our panel that we have that's going to uh, speak to these issues. Um, First, we have, uh, actually I'll start on the far end here, we have Mr. Doug Tarl, who is Director of the Cape Fear Community College Small Business Center. Right next to Mr. Tarl, we have Jonathan Rowe, who is Director of the UNCW Entrepreneurship Center and member of Cape Fear Future Leadership Team. Sitting next to Mr. Rowe, we have Rich Novak, who is Executive Fund Director at Inception Micro Angel Fund. And then, last but certainly not least here on the end, we have John Hinnett, who is President and CEO of Wilmington Downtown, Inc. Um, if we could, what I'd like to do is start by turning it over and maybe we'll start with you, John. If each one of you can just kind of say a little bit about your organization that you're uh, here with and give everyone a frame of reference as to why you might be part of the conversation. Okay. Um this is what happens when you open your mouth to too many people. Um, I, uh, I got hired in 2007 in one of my first uh, economic development committee meetings with our organization. We had a goal setting session. And, uh, Larry Clark, the dean of Cameron School of Business, was uh, in the meeting. He said, John, we need to start an incubator out of town. And it needs to be a one-stop shop and all the uh, entrepreneurial support service programs in the city need to you need to understand that it's a free home, they can come down there one day a week and provide support and we, we create some type of an ecosystem, if you will. And, um, and in my recent trips to the Triangle on recruitment efforts, I've talked to companies and say, they say to me, you hey, guys, I hope you want to, but there's just something here that I, I, I don't want to leave. And, and, and when I met with folks from the Center for Entrepreneurial Development in, in, in Durham, they said, yeah, Durham's got this ecosystem. It's got this full pipeline of services. And so um, we've, we've floated, so we've kind of kicked the idea around here and there and without a whole lot of support or, or, or um, a board member input. I, I eventually moved our office to a street level location and I kind of put the idea on the back burner that since we've been at this new street level location, I get one or two people a week walk in just cold. I want to start a business in an area you guys talk to. And, and, and without you know, a whole lot of resources and, and, and trying to talk some people off the ledge when they say they want to do a you know, shag-centric restaurant, you know, and, and then there's the people who come in with legitimate ideas. And, and you want to try and cultivate culture, nurture these folks. And, and so I, think, I began to think, OK, well, I've got this. 1,200 square feet behind my my office that is already out with cubicles and offices and with the 
some creativity and, and, and innovative interior design, it could be a great space. And so um, I was, I had Randall Johnson's undivided attention for a week when we were in Chapel Hill together taking a class. And every time at dinner I'd say, I've got this idea for an incubator, and I kept telling him about it. And uh, I said, you know what, we get home and we'll write the ideas down. And so I created a one-sheet white paper about this concept. And uh, lo and behold, I walked to lunch one day, and Randall was talking to Mark about my idea. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so I've asked my landlord to give me a rendering and a budget. And I know pretty much what the budget's going to be, but the, 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 the vision I have for an incubator is, is one, it's got to be in a business environment. It's got to be in downtown. Um, it's got to be in a place where mentors are within a block. Um, people who can provide advice. Um, what it focuses on, whether it be tech, clean tech, um, you know, I, I know what we need downtown. We need office space occupied. Um, you know, the, the thing we probably need that will probably get into trouble is we need a more sophisticated retail operator in downtown and creating some type of an entrepreneurial environment or incubator environment where uh, retailers can come in and learn more about the business and and get better care and, and, and understand the importance of marketing and bookkeeping and advertising and things that need to happen. Um, but essentially, we need to create a pipeline. Um, every time I get a tour of downtown, I'm sure to take people by the Wayne Space. And the Wayne Space is a great co work environment and, and it serves kind of an incubator day of fashion, but my vision would be that first step incubator where there's uh, an on-site executive director that sets up some type of a curriculum where you know one day a week they're going to talk finances, one day a week they're going to talk contracts, one day a week they're going to talk marketing. They're going to understand all those basic elements they need so that they don't just stay focused on their idea, but they're learning to, to create the whole entrepreneur and the whole business as opposed to just pushing an idea forward. Um, I, you know, we sat on a panel this past weekend at the International Downtown Association on Lincoln Bears and uh, it, it, it kind of stunned me to learn that the average incubator is 25 clients, and the average client stays 33 months in the incubator. When you think about 84% success rate and 81% um, of them stay in their community, and you know, so the, the statistics are mind boggling. You know, if, if just creating this simple little ecosystem can, can foster that kind of growth and development, and in my selfish opinion, loyalty towards that town. That truly becomes more of a sustainable strategy, as well as creating that pipeline to put more rental payment tenants in the white space and then eventually moving into other spaces in downtown. So it's truly a pipeline to increase the occupancy downtown. But uh, that's kind of my big picture idea. And what it focuses <coughs> on is, is not what I'm focusing on now, it's more so focusing on how much it's going to cost, what it's going to look like. And, how I raise money for it, and Johnny Sharp and I were this morning at the U.S. Economic Development Administration grant writing workshop, and one thing they do do is they, they fund grants and so for incubators, and so it's a, there's, there's an opportunity for us to grab money if we develop the right business plan, and, and we nail it. I mean, we got we to hit it out of the park first, first shot, so it's kind of fun here. Don't, don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs>